fossil friends I know you've been waiting for Greg's video of his GoPro videos of the cave exploration they were doing and you know these guys last time we left them they were deep inside a golden vagina and now they're going back into this cave system to see about this and the rest of the things that they may encounter so this is the outside of the cave. Now, uh, I'm going to just turn this down and listen to what he has to say. And the absolutely stunning uh, quality video. I mean, my camera doesn't work so good, but this is good. Now, what we're looking at here is layered intrusions. Now, you say it layered intrusions. Well, layered, obviously. Intrusion not supposed to be here. What does that mean? It's a creature laid here and died. And they have no clue about these things, but they call them layered intrusions. And then they think, oh, well, these all happen from some kind of sedimentary. But it's just, it's, it's, it's really very silly because it's flesh, connective tissue, flesh, connective tissue, and so forth. Now, there are other formations like this that are not flesh. They're actually organs. And... If you look up layered intrusions, we, we will one second, but let's just let this roll as we watch. This is a vast network of caves, and this was a huge creature. So either this is, this could literally be skin too. <laughs> I'm just telling you, this is a fact. That the creatures that were on this earth were absolutely phenomenally gigantic screen is a disaster when you look at it it's, it's a disgusting looking I should have cleaned it I didn't notice it until I was all done I'm not going back over it again I will wash it next time trust me I will remember my lesson all right thank you and I know what you're saying right now Roger 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 how can you say these creatures were so giant and I say well I just talked about a layered intrusion let's talk about this right here this particular material is what's called chromatite and I'm going to show you what else it really is. Uh, let's see if I can get a better picture of this for you so that you can see what that looks like. You see? see? That's a DNA certified human lung. There's a little moisture on there so it brings out the color. And I go deep inside to get, that's the, where the red blood is. So I don't take it right. They say, oh, they must have just wiped it off the surface and got a DNA. Absolutely not. I go deep into the arterial passageways where, where red blood is. And then they told me at the lab, this is dense. It was dense. They were very surprised. You've got to take it from the right place. You can't just rub it off the edge. Now, you saw this material. That's pretty obvious. It's a fabric-y material. That is what's called pleura, and that's on lungs. Well, let's go see what what layered intrusions are. Don't forget, layered intrusions, not supposed to be there. I say they're gigantic. Let's see what they say about them. This is it right here, layered intrusions. A layered intrusion is a large, sill-like body, igneous rock. No, it's flesh and connective tissue and so forth, which exhibits vertical layering Differences in composition and texture because that's the way your body's built these intrusions can be many Kilometers in area covering from around a hundred square kilometers 39 square miles to over 50,000 square kilometers 19,000 square miles these creatures this is creatures and that's creatures I'm telling you I have no question and I will prove it to you now Several hundred meters to over one kilometer in thickness, very deep, because they're creatures. They're long, deep. They got big and thick. They may be any age, such as Cenozoic. They don't have any clue about the ages. Although most are ultramafic, it's all not that. But some are lemniscus, intrusive complex. They're all creatures. Now, what is in these creatures? Well, there it is, right there. Well, guess what else is in them? Chromatite. And you say, well, what is chromatite? All right, chromatite is that right there. That's chromatite. All right, if you've been in mud fossils for any period of time, you know I'm always talking about abrupt transition, abrupt transition. There is a, a whole bunch of them in every 
tendon organ. So when I say tendon organ, I mean there's an emplacement and then there's a certain amount of tendon and then there's a, a, an abrupt transition, another amount and an abrupt transition, another amount and then it starts to go into the muscular tissue and you still have these abrupt transitions. This, I'm almost certain, is an extreme abrupt transition going this way. Now, I would think that the emplacement was down here somewhere and as we come up this way, you'll see Greg is going to show... Uh, it comes apart. What? Like some type of... See, look, you see that? That's an abrupt transition. I guarantee you that's an abrupt transition. I've seen hundreds of them, and that is an abrupt transition. Okay. And there's another abrupt transition. This is the way they work. They make their way out until you hit the red fleshy tissue. Now, I'm having a hard time working with this one, but I think we're now starting to get into... Although it looks like the same tissue, I don't know, but they do have abrupt transitions. This could have just sunk and break it, broken away and it's the same tissue, I don't know. But I can tell you where the other ones were, they were abrupt transitions. And these they, are all fleshy layers. About 50 feet up, down into here, and You see, you see, he, he's saying it's pink. You see these red layers in, in the infusion of, of, of blood into these things. And then they also have their own synovial sheaths mostly. And the reason I say synovial sheaths is everything that's in your body has to move against everything else. You are, if you're going to be flexible, every tendon has to move against every other tendon fiber freely. And I mean freely. If you throw a little extra silicon in there, it's going to scrub, you're going to have a hell of a pain. Uh, so these are what they call synovial sheaths. And they are primarily made out of slip clays, kaolin clays. They're absolutely, they make the finest of fine china out of them because you put them between your fingers, they tell me it feels like milk. Well, I know I've done it myself. It does. It feels, it's just as slippery as can be. And uh, I was watching Leak Project guy, very nice job he did on um, Goblin Canyon or something like that, which was a gigantic heart. And it was raining, and they were had to be very, very careful because it was solid blood out there. And he was slipping. He slipped a couple times. Uh, it's just, just like being on ice. Okay, here he goes into the, he's continuing right, on. close-up of what we were just painting across. And there are little... What he's seeing, these little, he's going to call them little stalactites, and what they are is where the, the blood vessels are, because the, everything here has to be totally infused with blood. There's not big holes like this. There is the tiniest little holes, and I have found, strangely enough, that these gigantic creatures had the same size blood cells as we have. I don't know why. They're not gigantic big platelets of blood cells. They're little bitty blood cells, and they're little bitty holes. Well, of course, they have big holes because they've got to get a lot of stuff down to a lot of places, but they end up with tiny, tiny, tiny little holes, and that's just the way it works. Small, tiny, tiny little stalactites. They're coming out of these. See them? This is the underside of it. See that? Every one of those is where there was a blood vessel. You're doing a good job, Greg. Some black right there. All right, anytime you see black, it's vein blood. Anytime you see red and yellow, it's arterial blood. The red starts here or wherever and starts moving over to, to get to the black. And that's the return black up, back up. Now, I think this is a tendon ball. He's in a large cavern. Right, this is going to be considered the first large cavern. We have a 3200 lemon LED DeWalt light set up to light up. I think that is a tendon ball. You see over here, you see this scrappy little stuff? You'll see it in a minute. But all the structure and the roundness gives me the intent. I believe it's a tendon the ball. The ceiling. Now, you see this? You see that scrappy stuff? And you see this absolutely perfect curve? I'm almost certain that is it just a gigantic tendon ball. You see that? 
that's fibrous webby stuff and that's the way these things are built that's the way they're they're structurally they grab into your body it's just i'm almost 100 percent sure that's a tendon ball as my my light hits the ceiling you'll see the gold and the silver light up Now, Roger, I'm pretty sure you're going to find this part very interesting. I do. This is what I think you were considering the edge of a lung, or from this point. I'm going with tendon ball. I'm not sure. But it goes way back there. All right, there you go. Whoops. Hold on. It's about. Again, these are abrupt transitions. I'm pretty sure this is tendon. That's all tendinous looking stuff to me. 65, 75 feet away from there. Alright, and that's what you would have. You'd have this tendon ball coming down with these straps. You know, and there'd be a lot of them, not just one. Now, through this center part, there's an area of mm -hmm. all the, the bumpy edges that have fallen away. Underneath is this crisscross pattern. It's like a, like a checkerboard tic-tac-toe pattern. Exactly. And I don't know if this is the enter... Stitchium, Roger. Stitchium. He's, he said he's talking about the interstitium, and yes, it, it is. It is an, a form of interstitium, um, and it may also be fascia. Fascia also has this very, very fibrous-looking web to it. But it's in in when you're alive, it's it's very watery. It's water-filled tubes, mostly. Uh, I'm sure you can figure that part out. Yeah, that's right. pretty, pretty great. That was nice. This is fabulous. This is fabulous. Look at this. Here he goes. He's in, he's, well, this is what he's got to say. All right. Um. You see that? Those are garnets. I'm almost 100% sure. And those, those are little tiny blood bubbles. And that's what garnets are. Garniferous stuff is the bodily fluids now they come in every different color so it's not doesn't always have to be red at the very top of the first large cavern and i'm going to take a sample of some of these gold colored areas that's fabulous we'll see what they are later Now, I'm going with another tendon ball. This is possibly part of the anchoring system of the tendon ball. And this could very well be an area where the strap was attached or something. Oh, no, that's his camera. All right, check this out. This is fabulous. All right, I'm at the very top of... The first large cavern. Now there's a couple of possibilities on these little dots. They could be like carborundum or they could be gar garnets, garniferous, which is bodily fluids. Mm. But I'm, as I look through this, I've seen it a couple times, and I, st I believe this is also a tendon ball. I believe this is also a tendon ball. And it's so big that we're seeing some of the specifics of the chemistry and of the articulation of the surface of these because this this holds this is grabbing everything is stuck in here in these holes and there's grabbers everywhere they're in your body and they don't they're anchors they're anchors it's just just think of this if you took that and you sunk that in the mud and all of these holes and everything got plugged up into and you had all kinds of different chemistry going in to hold on to these things that's what a tendon ball does. Very, very strong. Gold areas. You see how rounded see it is? Later. You see? Same thing, round, round. And then it's laid into this tissue. The tissue is the muscular tissue and the connective tissues. The balls lay in there and they're solid locked, rocked in there solid. And this stuff here is right around the outside of them. They have all of that fibrous anchory stuff. That is a tendon ball. And I'm going to show you one in that's made 
you know, a, 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 um, an anatomical look to ribs? it. This is fabulous, Greg. Are these ribs? Those are all the little spikes that would stick no, out right. inside to hold these tendon balls in place. No. They have they have a surrounding around them, um, and I can sh well I've shown it many many times, but they're built like in in um, onion skin, and the center is just as. It is this kind of stuff. It's mineralized. I'm going to show you this right now because it's, it's hard to understand until you see how these are built. And then there is the, the, the surrounding stuff actually almost acts like a cushion between here and the flesh. All right, this basically shows the way they're built. As they grow, the center turns into a ball of crystals like we just saw with all those fabric-y looking things around it. And outside of that, these come in like a, a rounded shell and then you get that bottom structure that I was showing you the anchor place at the bottom you get like these layers around it and that's what it was shown now it's a hundred percent that's a tendon ball I'm almost a hundred percent certain I can't think of anything else that would fit that bill this is um, another large cavern, and he's going to be showing that Where's tendon ball. Can? I'm Where not sure it's the same one. First cavern. Again, all of the layering, and in between these layers, that is where blood flowed. That is where synovial sheaths were. That is a separation, fascia, intersitium. It is layering not from anything other than biology. No. He's going to be looking at this this tendon ball up above, and it's he's taking samples, and this is going to be very interesting because I don't think this has had a lot of soluble morphism, which yes. means there's not been a lot That's of what we're standing on of of water coming through this particular you stuff. Get up to there. You see this? You That's going to be interesting as can be. What? this is made out of versus that but this is again they're it made in like like um, onion shells onion skins one after another you see even here as they attach to that and that anchors you they, those things right are solid there. and there is dozens of different areas in your body that have different types and the structure internally is different based on the job that it has to do whether it's in a, a, a an elbow or a bone or a, a a connective tissue area or you know there's a whole batch of different ways that they connect for, I took samples for the, the gold and silver colors and I took a sample of what looked like an artery or the edge of a rib it was white on the inside when I chipped at it though I have, may have been completely wrong the last time when I thought that they were inside of a golden vagina <laughs> I mean that's what it looked like now because uh, I'm seeing uh, this same sort of look you know you, know, you can't be, always be 100% right you can never be certain and um, well you can be certain sometimes but some things will definitely look like some other thing that's why it's critical for the chemistry line. See that abrupt transition? I'm almost sure that's abrupt transition. And these come up, abrupt transitions come up to hold on to these tendon balls. And I'm sure there's a whole batch of them around there at some point. Alright, the more I look, the more I'm thinking that it's the tendon straps that have eroded and left these channels in there that look like the cavities of, you know, a vaginal cavity. Now, uh, right now, we're in the, the second cavern. It's, this is the extended ceiling of the first cavern. It just keeps coming around. You see all these? There's the gold formations, silver, all that across the top of this. Uh, You see all these cavities coming down? The thing doesn't have 20 vaginas, so it's got to be something different than... 
than a vagina. Well, it could be, you know, I don't know. Maybe this is the vagina and and not a tendon ball, but I'm starting to think this was where the tendon emphasis strap went up and up above is the tendon ball, not a vagina. I think I was wrong. I think I was wrong. It sure looks like it, but uh, let's see, got a little further to go on this. Yeah, there's something not right. I think I was wrong. I think these are where that tendon strap went up. And there was another one that went up here to another ball somewhere. And another one over here, because that's the way they go. There's a zillion of them, and there's another tendon ball over there, maybe. I don't know. But these are huge, huge, huge tendon balls. And these straps are running up to all of these different ones. So I was wrong. I'm, I'm certain of it now. Here's another area where they're running up to these tendon balls. And that makes sense that the tendon balls would have these minerals and, and anchors in them. Something that's mineralized. Very, very interesting. Here's that same looking effect that we've seen many times. That's That's a, that's a tendon ball, I'm pretty sure it's a part of one. Turn red through here. That's the... This, this area right here. Very show. Very red. And it's in the beard. That's what they are. They're very bloody right underneath All the... All the way through this one area. I'll show you one of mine that has all that bloody red stuff. All right, that, that's a tendon ball. That's a tendon ball right there. That's where the strap went in. And that's the ball. And you see all that red bloody stuff all around it? That's all the blood from... that, that surrounds these tendon balls. It gives them some ability to not chafe into you. Because that is as tough as tough can be. Those little spikes sticking out of there. They will rip your bones to shreds if they didn't have that buffer around them. Now... Believe it or not, that is a meteorite, I'm almost 100% certain. It came through probably at night when it didn't completely burn up and it scalded everything or it took away all of the fleshy tissues and ended up with the structural part inside. The red blood exploded because that is what boils. The black blood did not. That is the structure of what that is and that is a fingertip. I gotta be honest with you, this um, a little bit perplexes me because this is what they call marl. And there's all kinds of different minerals and stones and bloody tissues and all kinds of things like that in there. And I believe they're, they're some form of an organ or they could be in the intestinal system or bits of the stomach or whatever. There's something in there that... It's not structural. It's not a structural component in there. They're very weak and 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 and, and sedimentary almost. But they, I, I don't believe they are sedimentary. I think there is. I believe these are maybe in the in the intestines. No, really, I got to be honest with you. I'm not sure. But they are not structural, and I believe that is their nature is to look like this because that's the way they are in the body. Now, what the par part of the body? I am not certain. Now this is obviously layers of tissue and connective tissue and this is the bloody layer that services those and he's going to show that very clearly. We're in the third cavern. Watch, he's going to go right into the third blood vessels. You see, there it is. That's, that's blood coming out. Now that flows through there and services these chunks and they flow through there in these tiny 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 little holes and every bit of this every single cell in there has to be flushed with blood and that that keeps going up and up and up and it is quite red in there i will take a sample from this this 
one right here. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing. There is DNA in those. I'm going to guarantee you that. Now, you, anytime you ever take a sample of mud fossil DNA, be sure that you find a blood vessel. Then scrape around. Then get it all cleaned out. Then, of course, you got to have a sterile mask. You got to have all these things. You got to, and I put a, a, a dressing around it so that everything is is you tape right around it. Clean it all out good, obviously. Tape around it. Mask, gloves, hair net, you know, hair hat, whatever, and um, bleach tools, all that. Then drill in there. Drill in there. Go go deep, and you will get DNA that will be dense. I have done it. And it was dense. And I keep going all the way down. And I did mine on giants too, but not quite this big. <laughs> all the way down. Sunlight may have hit. Look at the size of this thing. This is absolutely right. enormous. Follow my mic. Look at this. Follow my mic. There's somebody right there. Yeah, right there. Keep going around. Up. Right. Yeah, there we go. There's some more connective tissue, it looks like. When you see these these whiter looking places. They're normally limestone connective tissues. And then you get the red, red areas in between because they have to work together. Sometimes it's almost completely limestone like Devil's Tower um, foot. That's a foot. And they're all hex fibers of limestone. And then around those fibers is kaolin clays, which is a synovial sheath that in the body lets them slip back and forth. It keeps them separated in the body when you're alive and when you're dead it does too. If you fossilize in the mud fossil fashion, salt water flood, long time waterlogged, and then dried out. You know, it's very structural. That's very structural stuff. Okay. So it's, it starts off gray, gray, and it gets redder and redder. Okay, once you get into the red, you're, this is the nutrition area. This is what flushes it with red. And then it transitions over to... You see the black down there too. You usually have red and black. They're very close to each other. The vein artery come close in most cases. Sometimes they're separated out. But a lot of times they run almost right together. Dark gray, light black. So we've got pink and a gray. That's that's typical of blood. In between the two. So that's pretty cool. All right, now it appears to me that somebody was mining here some of this stuff, and they apparently ran into this wall. Maybe. Um, it is obviously different from what's around it and all those little chips laying there it looks to me like somebody was working there and uh be careful of that buddy boy you guys taking some serious chances my friend <laughs> it's uh i wouldn't be want to be down there if that thing let go uh some of this stuff very hard to tell where it is and you know, it's not the best shots in some of them, but it's uh, it's incredible stuff, man. And really, honestly, I mean, I don't mean to be a spoil sport, but you, this is this is serious stuff, brother. I could see why they'd be very concerned about people being in these caves. It's definitely a risk. Well, they uh, are having a hard time in here getting anything serious, but but the 
so a lot of crevices and crags and so forth in there. It's hard to tell where they are, and it's hard to tell if somebody's been in there working and then it's collapsed because it, they, these are very, very fragile structures. I'm telling you, they're fragile. The ones you originally showed me the first time of the videos they had, they were pretty reasonable, but one of them had those black and white stripes, and he said that when they went out back, that had collapsed. So, it's not just pie in the sky, what I'm saying. Okay, this is a very cool one. I got to this spot because I, I, at this point, I thought it was a kidney, but I'm not sure. I really, I'm still not sure. But when I saw this, I see the black blood, the red blood, and then this white substance, which I'm not exactly certain what it is, but it could have something to do with the salts or the natron that's in um, in kidneys. Now, you see all these little crevices all the way down here? This is how kidneys work. The blood filters through, and, and inside the matrix, it somehow takes out the uric acids and so forth. I don't know how exactly it works, but the, um, it was a very cool shot here. And here's that stuff again. Now, there is something called natron, and it's, it's the sodium and salts and everything that are in kidneys. Now look at this, a very nice structure. Look at this, very cool. It's, now, you see all up in here, these little dots and things? I don't think anybody excavated this. I think this was was just nature, natural, I'm sorry. Look, you see this? That, I believe, well, I know for a fact that fluids are flowing through here. And why would fluids be flowing through there? It's either in the kidney area or some other organ. Not uh, This is not lung tissue, I can tell you that. But I'm not sure if there's a, like a pancreas or a liver. I wouldn't say it was liver because liver has way too many minerals to be this. This, this white-looking stuff is kidney. But usually kidneys are flat and they, they're, they're really craggy and looking and everything. But when that's normally when I see them eroded. This could be just fresh kidney tissue, the normal looking kidney. And, and a gigantic kidney, so this could be the tiniest little bits in the kidney that I really don't have, haven't very often seen. This thing's a gigantic creature, absolutely enormous. And you see that? That's, you know, obviously, look at how f absolutely flawless this is. These structures are not just accidental. And that blood flu flowed through there, or fluids flowed through there, and then there was some kind of of um, a membrane, and osmosis happens, or whatever it does, and this stuff goes. Now, this, I would say, is collected in here. I don't know if it is or not. It's a little hard to tell. Um, but it is a fabulous fabulous shot and this place is interesting this is stable you're already in a place like this but when the stuff is falling around you it, it's gonna fall you just don't want to be there when it happens you know the more I look at this this actually could be skin and you see these little teeth like locking in like this layers of skin lock in just like that with those kind of teeth in that bloody stuff just like that just like that and then these teeth running all the way down along it to hold one layer to the next and I can prove that right now and let's put that one on hold and I will show you how I can prove it because I have a single skin intersection attachment right here this is one single skin attachment <laughs> This is what I'm saying. This is just outrageous stuff. This is the attachment. That is the strap. You see that strap running back there? It comes out like this. And these are the teeth that lock it in to the next layer. Exactly what we're just looking at. Now, in if you look where the, the strap comes in, this is where it's fed with blood on the sides. And that is literally skin tissue. That's skin tissue. Let me show you something else. I think this is the one that has it. No, it isn't. But anyway, and in the sides of the mountains, next to the oceans, they built the caves in here. You see these little 
pinch points. They went in there with their fingernails and dug that red blood out of there and built caves in there. Because that's what that is, is red blood. Oops, you see that? Well, and the more, um, the um, indigenous peoples over in uh, New Zealand and all over in that area in Australia, they did the same things. See, now you can see these. I'm starting to think they're skin attachments. You see the exact same thing I was just showing you. And, and that's what holds these things one layer to the next. They just discovered this. And I've been talking about this for years now. Because I can see it in my mud fossils. They, they, they just, just figured it out. And they're called intersitium. And it, it was not even a year ago. They said they're a new organ hiding in plain sight. This is the same stuff all over your body. This kind of stuff surrounds organs and your skin and everything is made with this intersitium. This is an interesting one. I would call this marl, which means all kind of different stuff mixed together. That is some kind of an organ it was. And that, that's the, the way organs work. They have all different types of minerals and crystals inside of them. And those minerals and crystals work on the chemistry because there's so much, it's a ton of chemistry. It's not just one little thing comes in you. You have to have all those different things to work with you. Now, this is interesting. There's a pool of water down here. And you look at the layers. You can see the different colors in the layers. It's, you know, it's quite obvious. That, so, oh, okay, I can tell you what this is. Well, and I can't tell you for sure, but I'm almost sure this is a tendon ball. And these layers are the layers of the tendon ball. That was the inside of the tendon ball. And you see how they're rounded, and it comes around. And uh, I'm not sure what he's doing here, but that's, uh, I would say that that's what that is, a tendon ball. You see how rounded it is? It rounds and rounds and rounds. Uh, or it could be a lung, a lobe of the lung. Let's look at that one more time. But all these different little, these these are the kind of things, I, this is part of the lung too, I'm almost sure this is part of the lung. Because those kind of crystals are what the lung works with. Even though there are little bitty ones here and the other ones were big chunky ones. Little bitty ones are still okay. This is a lung, this is all lung. You have these big holes in your lungs and when, you're, when they're done, they're, they end up filling up with water. Too many different minerals and, and different types of, of um, elements here. This is a lung, no question in my mind. Okay, he's collected some samples here and this was this this is kind of interesting. I gotta be honest with you. I'm not sure what where that was in the body, but I can tell you what this is. That's the blood obviously. You can see the little tiny this is blood vessels. Now this yellow is either that almost looks like sulfur or it doesn't look like, well, here's, let me put it this way. You come down with red blood, it turns to yellow, then it turns to brown, then it turns to black. If that's the case here, this is the blood moving. But it usually doesn't turn this bright yellow. However, it could. Usually it turns, yeah, it's actually not that far off. Now, if we could go further away, does it turn black after the yellow? That would be the key. If it turns black down here, that's a, well, it does actually. I can see it's turning blacker. Here's the red, we're going into the yellows, and it's turning black. I'm going with the lung tissue. All right, I have to admit, I am a little bit confused. I had a thought this was the vagina cave. And um, up in there, I mean, this is the way the vagina tissue works. But now it's sort of changing. What I originally saw was, I believe, this shot right here. And as it went straight up. Now... As we go around this, it comes to a structure which I think is the backbone or something along that, or the breastbone or something. I don't know. This could be, a, I don't know where it is. This could be in the lung area. But you could see there's this, then there's this bump. Now, we're in a creature that is so gigantic. This could be so small that it was insignificant in us. But you see, there, there is no question what what we have here is some form of a biological structural component 
This thing is very, very, very big. And I believe this is the same cave they were in last time. Uh, so, at this point, I, I, I'm a little bit confused, to be perfectly honest with you. But this is where they originally walked in. You see this stuff on the ceiling? Now, what is that? I'm not sure. Did somebody paint that up there? Or is that pyrite? Or, or what's going on there? I really don't know what that is. But I can see it's in its own formation. It's not, it's not part of anything else. Let's look at that again. This is what you want to look at. See, well, what defines it? Look, this is absolutely perfect. It's like somebody put a mat on there. Well, what is that about? These are things that intrigue me. I could tell if nobody did that, I wouldn't think. I mean, who the hell is going to do that way up in the air like that? And what, what are all those colors? And the gold. Is that pyrite? I would think it's pyrite. You see how? That's like a, a, a mat of tissue that is infused with certain chemistry, and it's not part of the entire thing. Maybe it's even feces or something. Maybe this is an anal passage. I have no clue at this point. <laughs> I mean, you call it shitting bricks. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's... Um, You know, I'm getting, just getting glimpses of things that I just, I'm, I'm, I'm as confused as anybody. And these passageways are, are pretty large, and they're very interesting. You know, they, they certainly look to be, I thought it was a vagina, and I could be very wrong. Because uh, something's not right here for that particular thing and uh, there's some see these passages you see that see that that's like a whole body of a thing these are, are, are there's a structure going on here this is not what I had originally thought because you had one of these lumps over there and then there's going to be another one over this side the same sort of thing so anyway that's uh that's interesting. But all creatures are built in these layers now. You know, this is not unusual. They call layered intrusions. No, that's creature intrusions. These are creatures. They're not they're not just run off, collected here, collected there, collected here. Absolutely not. They just had no way to explain this, so that was the way they chose. It's not correct. Now you see it right here? Ideally stratic strat strat graphic sequence of an ultramafic intrusive complex which is what I'm saying is a creature consists of periodites pyroxenes with associated chromatite layers now why is a chromatite why would fascia and pleura and the what they call now uh, intersitium be in all these layers. Well, guess why? It's because it was a creature. Well, let's go see what chromatite looks like. And guess what it looks like? Wow. <laughs> you see any difference? There is none. Because this is chromatite. This is the pleura of a lung. This is the fascia that coats all your organs and is in everywhere in your body. You have chromatite. Not that big, but you've got it. Okay, here's another shot in Greg's cave here. Now, don't forget that what I just showed you, that pleura and that lung, the fascia, that is DNA certified. So these are absolutely legitimate configurations and formations that were originally creatures. And I say they were giant human beings, almost all of them that I can find. I mean, I, I'd like to see the DNA tests on them, but I don't know. The ones I have are DNA certified, 100% human. I have one that's over 200 feet tall. It's, and and I, it's there, but it's mostly buried. There's a few fingers and so forth laying around. We had one of those tests and certified, and, and that was DNA 100% uh, human. 100%. 100%. But there's two types. There's mitochondrial DNA and then there's the nuclear DNA. And the nuclear DNA is the, the one that really gives you all the little special types of things. The maternal DNA the, and mitochondrial DNA, that's, I believe, the mother's DNA. And it fil filters down to everybody. And you have, everybody has a certain set of this DNA if you're a homo sapien. 
and it comes from the mother's side, the maternal DNA, and it doesn't doesn't change a lot. It's not like anyway. That's the way it works. If it's there, you're a Homo sapien. Case closed. And there was two regions in that in those particular types of areas that were 100% human, and they were 100 base pairs. So let's get off that case. It's all real. If and they are not accepting any of this stuff to be tested anymore because I think the academics went after them. I've been having people even Europe, Europe. They won't do it in Europe. They won't do it here. The guy I had mine done with will not get back to me. I don't know. I hope he's all right, but I think I, I think I understand why he won't get back, and he won't get back to anybody from Europe either. So, you know, it's unfortunate that people are put into this position, and I don't want to put anybody in a bad position, but I'm sure I have. And I'm sorry if anybody's taking some hits because of working with me, but that's just reality is reality. I'm sorry, it's just a fact. Now, this was a, a, a spot that Greg talked about having a trackway up above. Now, I, I don't know what this is, but I do know that the, the size of this formation is massive. And when you get to these sizes of formations, you will get these kind of slits. And the, what was in here was fluids, synovial sheaths, and things like that. This one's exceptionally large. Usually they're, they're very, they're, they're, they're pronounced just like this, but narrow. Uh, I, I don't know about this, to be honest. But anyway, let's see what it does. Here it goes. They got a light going down, and somebody's going down in there. To, and he said it goes way, way, way down, as far as they could see. And this is way up. Now, another thing I always, 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 always mention is this moss. Moss doesn't just grow on nothing. Moss loves blood. Moss and lichen. You see it? It's lichen and it's mossing. They love it. They love, 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 love it. I'm telling you right now. All right, so, and, and you see the way these things, this is not some oddball thing that just happened. This is a creature. And then, then you start looking at colors. And find the blood vessels. And find the black and the red and the yellow. See, this is yellowish looking. Um, anyway, so that's, I, I don't really know what to say about that particular thing. So, sometimes you have to see all the way around the structure to be sure of what you're looking at. Because um, I, don't, I don't have a real, I don't have a, answer for that maybe <laughs> I don't know um, but this is more important this kind of stuff to get around the edges of these things so that I can tell it now it's starting to all right, all right oh, oh, oh hold on Greg <laughs> somewhere out here all right now we got something we can work with that is looks to me like a bone foramen and what a bone foramen is, it's in, in bone structure, and this may be bone, I, I, you know, usually you don't find bone, but this is above ground, and it's massive, so the, you may have some bone in this. Anyway, you, these round holes, they're not just, oh, this could be a lung hole, it could be a kidney hole, it could be a blood vessel, which you primarily would be an artery, but as I'm looking at it, and, and then we were looking at all that layering. And so I think this might be kidney or lung. Because the, the structural components are primarily made out of limestone, CaCO3. That's your connective tissues. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing about how to do this research. Because I can't do it much more than I've been doing. I'm really slammed. I'd like to see everybody else be able to do their own research. It's simple to do. But what you're going to have to do is get an excellent excellent high quality or uh, uh, um, anatomy book and just look at what they look like just look at the structures just see what they look like in the in the human body and then go to my site you know you're gonna have to dig a lot through my videos because I have every body part there ever was in every different type of result from every different type of condition such as acids and salts and geothermal and the whole nine yards i got them hundreds of different types of lungs just lungs alone and the tendons they just do all kinds of things tendon balls all over the ballpark but you have to do you have to understand the anatomy to understand what you're looking at from the first place you look at it and say "Ooh, what does that look like well 
that hole just doesn't fall in there. So, oh, there was a ball that rolled around in there, a rock or something, and the water ran off. No, absolutely not. I mean, that might happen, but that didn't form it in the first place. Uh, these things are natural cavities of creatures' bodies. <laughs> you see how cool this is? That was where the bodily fluids ran out. That's water running out from the same sort of... This this is black blood. This is from the vein. That would be the red blood from the artery. You can see it has flowed down here and it has discolored this, but it flows out of there and leaves them primarily open. See it's reddish over here? I don't know if you can see that. Or this one's black. That's the difference between the vein and artery blood. But you see all these little layers? Those are layers of either skin or um, this actually could be a uh, uh, a kidney, but I'm I'm just not sure yet. All right, there's some serious layering here of different layers and different types of areas where there. You see, this is thick and then thin, 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 a little thicker, a little thicker, thin, thin, thin. That's the way your body's built. An absolutely unbelievable number of layers. And this creature was gigantic. This could literally be skin. And in between here, there's going to be little bits of blood flowing here and there like that red layer. I have one over here somewhere that shows, uh, you know, it, it, there'll be layers that are just solid red, the whole layer, real thick like that, and it's, it'll be where the blood is. And so you want to look at these layers and sort of, you, you know, they're all, you can't tell. You're going to have to chip them up a little bit and put a little moisture on them. You're going to see white and black and red and green, you know, I mean, all kinds of different colors. And it's, it's the chemistry of your body. And it's spectacular. I'll show you some stuff that'll knock your socks off. But that's, uh, He's finding things that there's no question what it's, it's a creature, but nobody understands how to how to understand what they're looking at. They say, "Oh, this is an intrusive sill." Well, good for you. That's a creature. And whenever you see, like I say, look for the red and the black for the blood, and they're going to normally be right near each other. And in these layered intrusions, there will be layers of blood because they have to surface all this tissue. All that tissue's got to be serviced all the time, being completely engulfed with fluids and so forth. So, what do we know? The whole outside is obviously eroded away, that whatever was on the outside, the skin, the flesh and so forth, is because we're down to something here, or that is the skin. That could be, that could be the skin on a creature this size. I'm going to tell you right now, Greg, you are lucky to be coming out of this one alive. This is the worst place you could possibly be. These things are not solid whatsoever. They are just tumbling off the walls. Look at this. Look at this. Greg, get out of there, man. Run for your life, brother. Look at this. What are you doing, my friend? <laughs> oh, God. Now, this is, this, I see two possibilities here, and I'm thinking this is lung. You see this reddish looking tinge here? What happens in lungs is you have blocks and chunks that the blood flows in through. And I have one here. A little one now. Well, I can't find it right now. Hold on, give me a second. All right, look carefully at these splits between all these wide open cracks. What are all these chunks doing? I'm going to show you this. It's the same thing. Blood flows through there and for some reason that blood will see how it's it's moisture around and they're dry in the center these are still doing their job today of somehow changing these chemistry into carbonic gases and the bloods flow through there and transfers the blood chemistry somehow interacts with these crystals and then they blow out the carbonic acids blow out as carbonic gases and these things are weak as hell Greg Greg my friend if you see this you see this something blocks like this inside of there is nothing but dusty blood and when it runs out it'll it'll wash right out of here and it's just sitting here just waiting to fall and here's what's in them is these transition metals I can't tell you how lucky you are. You all you step in the wrong place and it's over for you, brother. All right. In between all of those crystals, which are the same crystals you're seeing over there, only he's got a set that are, are black ones all in one area, and that happens. Uh, this is a small lung, so you won't you don't see all the different I mean you don't see one area being real 
thick with one particular color. And, and this is, these are where all your transition metals are in your body. Well, not all of them in your body, they're all over your body. But in your lung, they do this job of exp expending the gases out of you. So, again, I say it's a lung. I'm going to go almost 100% sure that that's a lung. That looks like a lung to me. And it is a dangerous place to be. Now, right, he's going to show a little more. Here we go. <clears throat> now, these, these chunks are the things. Whenever you see a lot of these little pebbles and these little things laying all over, that's lung tech, um, parts. And they've fallen apart. And actually, the molecules would have run through here during the guy's life. You see it? And the air pa passageways run through there, too. So you're going to have air passageways, and then you're going to have lung tissue. And he is in the most dangerous place I can ever imagine to be. <laughs> I'm not telling you, brother. You are scared me just looking at this. <sighs> Oof. I could just imagine that thing letting go, and it is just on the edge of disaster. So, um, pay heed next time, my friend. Okay, once again, still in the lung, I believe, and still in a dangerous condition. The red and the black is mixing here, right together. This is when you see that, you can almost be certain it's a lung. Because that is where the blood changes from one color to the other. It's being oxygenated. Now, let's watch a little further here. And, he said, and it's, that, the whole strip was red blood coming out, away for, or in one or the other. And it's being, there's a, a membrane that separates the red from the black. Now, again, these are all lung tissues. And you can see a lot of red in there. And, uh, and the blood flows in between all of these little crystals when, you, when the person, person was alive. Isn't that amazing? Look at how the... It's drying out. This is how it works. These things are extremely, extremely invaded by high water. And, and, and that's why they do this job so well. Somehow they're, they're, they're passing these gases off. And you see that? This, this is blood. That's blood right there. And that blood, and you see all the, you can see the, the uh, moss is loving that blood and looking for it. And you see what it broken off like that? That's tissue when it breaks like that. You know, little strips of tissue. And we're made in blocks. We're made in literal blocks. And even your brain. I got a brain I could show you and knock your socks off. All right? This, this is, that's long. That's all long. All right. Wow, yikes. Look at this one. A picture of somebody standing way down there. It looks like he's standing next to it, a dinosaur. <laughs> hey, that's only a picture. I don't know what it's about, but it's a pretty good size area that they're into. All right, I'm thinking this again is lung tissue. Um, these crystals and this, you know, when you see all these, like even stalactites and stalagmites are normally, I believe now, um, I'm not 100% sure of this, but I believe mostly they are from lungs and where, where the moisture flows into the lung tissues, it, it drips these things out of there and, and they start to collect as mineralized stuff. Now this one here is in a place where it's mostly because of the blood because it's in a lung, so you're getting stalactites in red or stalactites or whatever you want to call them. No. This is, um, the black is, is another lung tissue that I see in these chunks. You see that? Now some of them, there, there's, um, we know this is inside of a creature, so this is not something like from a volcanic obsidian or that type of thing. This is, um, this is lung tissue crystals. And I have the same, I've seen the same ones, exact same ones. All right, this is a really cool shot. And this, again, is still lung tissue. You see all those crystals and everything? Isn't that something? Look at that. Now, they do this job in your body. They transfer the carbonic acids, change them into carbonic acids. Blood flows in between these crystals, and it change, and the blood somehow changes these acids into gases. 
They know what happens. And you look at this. Look at that. Look at this. This is fabulous, Greg. That's fantastic. Amazing. Amazing. I'm almost certain this would be lung. It's possibly kidney or some other organ, too. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of stuff I don't know about this. I'm just guessing a lot of times. But I do the chemistry, too, because the... the the, it, wow, look at that. It, uh, somebody was probably digging in here. It's hard to tell exactly, but see now, wow, look at that. Alright, so this, this is, to my way of thinking, this was originally some kind of artery, or probably an artery, or a bone foramen, and that's the bottom of the bone foramen. It could very well be. You see how that's all marbled looking? That could be, that could be from bone, yeah, that could be a bone foramen. Inside a tissue, and this is the tissue layers. And you see that? That didn't happen from any, you know, this is just silly the way they do geology, I'm telling you. These oh, that just happened. No, it didn't. That's, there's no way that happened by itself. That is geology, biology, biology. Isn't that fabulous? Very nice, Greg. Very nice. I've seen some things I have not really. Uh, this I, th this is very very good stuff here. I haven't seen uh, this kind of. Um, well, let me tell you something about. I, I keep interrupting myself, but that's what I do. That's where blood was. You see that black? That's where blood was. That whole thing is a blood seam. See? And if in your body, that would have been moving bodily fluids. Well, now it's moving water. And. Where he is now, I'm not certain. But I tell you, if it's raining and you go into that place where all those rocks were falling apart, I would never do that. 